Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew. Now what I have for you today are Fieldcraft Camping Hacks. We're going to use some of the items from our kit for lesser known purposes to make life around the patrol base into the field just that much easier. But before we get started, make sure you like and subscribe and leave a comment. Now, let's go. At base camp, we're out on the patrol base when permitted. Having a camp stove and the ability to cook food or a hot drink makes life a lot easier. One of the best stoves to have is going to be a small portable alcohol stove. Easily transported, the fuel can be rationed by immediately extinguishing the flame once we're done cooking or making our hot drink. And it emits low light and gives off zero smoke. However, we are limited by the amount of fuel we can bring with us into the field. If we happen to run out of fuel, we can improvise additional alcohol stove fuel with hand sanitizer, salt from our MRE, and some sort of strainer or filter like this coffee filter. We can take a plastic bottle, cut it in half for one side, using it as a mixer, put in our hand sanitizer and our MRE salt, stir it up, distilling the alcohol. We should have a runny liquid now. And then we can take a filter, put it in the other side of the bottle, dump in our slurry and strain or distill the alcohol from that hand sanitizer. We can then take that, dump it into our stove, light it up, place our canteen cup of water over top or our meal, cook it until it's nice and hot, and then taking the tamper, put out the fire, saving that fuel. We can put the lid back on when we're done and it's cooled down. Then we can make our hot drink and sit back and enjoy. Are you like me and you like to go camping with commando wire saws? I didn't think so. But if you find yourself in a position with a commando wire saw out in the wild, there is a technique we can use to split a log to get at the dry inner material for a survival fire or to use as a fire for camp. We simply construct our commando wire bow saw and saw halfway into the dry material or the log that we want to access we then take that log, find a good sturdy tree, and we swing like a baseball bat against that tree until we form a split. We can then use our hands and our man strength to break that log open and access that dry inner material. Using our knife, we could then shave feather sticks or shavings down the inner material, and then taking our lighter or fire starting device, ignite the inner material, and boom, we got fire. There's always going to be that one person in the group who's got really bad eyesight or needs glasses, and they're going to have a nice big pair of BCGs on their face. We can take those glasses and, using the sun's rays, start a fire using solar ignition method. We simply take those glasses, break them in half so the lens are facing each other, and then practicing focusing the sun's rays on our hand. We can use the sun's rays, similar to a Fresnel lens or a Fresnel lens, to ignite char material very easily, or we could form a tinder bundle with fine material that we've processed and using the sun's rays in the same method, focus a tiny beam of light onto our tinder bundle until we have a nice ember formed in the tinder bundle. And then all we have to do is simply blow that ember into flame and we've got fire. I've been wearing this Wazoo Cash survival belt for many years. I like it because I can take survival items with me anywhere I go in uniform and out of uniform. I also like to take tips and tricks from other survival and bushcraft practitioners in the field and apply them to my own philosophy. One such trick is going to be from Morse Kohansky with a bucksaw blade in the belt trick. What we can do is take that bucksaw blade, tape it up so it's safe and keep it in our cash belt until it's ready to use. And with our survival knife and that saw blade, we can harvest the other materials from around the area to recreate a bucksaw frame to support our saw blade and use it efficiently. We just gather those materials, baton the uprights to fit our saw blade, whip those uprights to keep them strong to hold that saw blade, carve our V-notches for our cross section halfway up the uprights, carving our cross section to fit perfectly. We marry all the items up and then fit our saw blade with toggles to keep it locked in place. Taking cordage, whatever that may be, 550 cord, 
we use it as a windlass over the top of our saw and tighten it down until the saw blade is in perfect unison and tight ready to go for use. We take that saw blade and we can use it to process smaller materials and even use it to process larger materials for our use. The cheaper model for a match safe are better in my opinion. They're still watertight, but the bottom has a small ferro rod that can be used to get a fire going. We can use that small ferro rod with tinder concealed inside of the match safe itself and ignite that very easily. But in an emergency, we can also use the matches if they're damp for whatever reason or another tinder source in an emergency with a small flint at the bottom of that match safe to get a fire going. We simply take out our matches, crush them up with a rock on a surface that we can collect the material, and then taking our striking device with our match safe, we can simply strike the ferro, igniting the material to get a fire started. Part of being a survivalist or a woodsman or someone who goes out to the field quite frequently is learning to use natural materials or things we stumble across while out in the field. One such thing can be deer time, like in this shed. We can take the shed and use it for a variety of things. Handles, ornaments, necklaces. We can even use it for a bearing block. We can take the thicker portion, saw off the excess, using our knife or a drill, carve a divot in the time, and then use it as a bearing block for a primitive bow drill fire set. Most often the point of failure for primitive fire, especially the bow drill, is going to be that bearing block and shouldering out the spindle or not having enough friction down in the hearth where you need it. So we take our bearing block made from that deer tine and simply conduct business as usual, burning in our hole on our primitive bow drill set, carving our notch, and then once we're ready to go, we go for an ember, building up that dust until we have it smoking by itself, apply it to a tinder bundle, and blow it into flame. Good to go. One of the things I picked up in the schoolhouse is turning large survival kits or large quantities of items into smaller components to fit inside either a survival tin or a smaller kit because we're not going to be able to carry everything we want into the field. So we need to make it smaller with the same appropriate items to function, but just not as many of those items. One way that we can do that is by creating simple tape sachets. What we do is take our razors, we'll tape them up lengthwise because we're going to wrap the cord around the razor. It'll help protect the cordage, in this case thread for our sewing kit and fishing line for our fishing kit. We then take another piece of tape, fold the tips in to create a portion where our hands or our fingers can grab to open the kit itself. And then we put our razor down with our line and our thread. We add our safety pins and needle or our fish hooks and our sinkers as appropriate. And we can fold those up so the tape secures the items in our kit. And then when we need them, we can just simply pull the tabs apart and our kit is there ready to go. Land navigation is a difficult skill to master. Luckily, there is a simple method for finding our direct line distance and direction back to our starting point from an unknown location out in the wild. And it's called the Paul method proximate azimuth uniform lay. What this requires is that we keep track of the distance and direction we've moved over the Earth's surface as we travel. When we get to our last point and decide to return to our initial start point, we can take the distance and direction in our notebook and recreate that on the Earth's surface, in this case using camp stakes and mason line. We put one camp stake in the ground, attach mason line, using our compass find the exact direction that we need from point one to point two, and then draw out that mason line, establish a measuring tool or a measuring device, in this case our feet, one foot equals 100 meters, and then we simply walk out that direction with the mason line and our feet until we reach that determined distance, place our second point in the ground, and from there repeat the process until we reach our final point. Once we get to our final point, we simply attach that mason line, draw it all the way back to our start point, find the distance and direction with our compass and our feet, and then boom, we have our distance and direction ready to go back to our start point and find our way out. Too easy. 
that every soldier should have a hygiene kit in the field. And one of the hacks we can use with our hygiene kit is replacing a normal mirror with a concave makeup mirror inside that hygiene kit. We should have a normal mirror anyway as part of our survival kit. But with this concave mirror, it gives us another way to start fire in the field. We can simply take that mirror and reflect the sun's rays into a fine point on a tinder bundle or a bird's nest. And then as it smokes, move the rays of the sun around the tinder bundle, creating an ember and simply create an ember inside of our tinder bundle. Once it's smoking by itself, we just blow it into flame and we've got fire. In the field, a hack we can use to treat major injuries and close wounds until such time that we can get a casualty that has a major laceration or ourselves to a follow-on medical treatment facility for additional care is by creating external sutures. Using this method, we won't cause a secondary injury or introduce foreign objects or bacteria into an already open wound. All we do is take out our tape from our survival kit, rip off strips small enough to use, and then using our pencil or a stick off the ground, we simply roll the tape backside over the stick until it, the sticky side is touching and then fold it back and roll it over itself the opposite direction to create an eyelet for our suture. And we can make a few of these very quickly, slightly slide them off the pencil and then attach them to the back of the notebook. To simulate a laceration to ourselves, we're just gonna take that red Sharpie and draw two parallel red lines indicating the laceration, but then a gauge of measurement to watch as those red lines come closer together as part of the external suture effect. Once we have those lines drawn, then we just access those sutures that are ready made, ready to go for the length of the laceration and apply them on opposite sides, staggering them slightly because we're gonna use cordage to tighten these up. With our sutures in place, we can now use our cordage. We're gonna lace from the bottom to the top. That way we can easily pull the sutures together. We're gonna to lace through the bottom two sutures first, tightening them together and then leaving one overhand knot and then cross the sutures, go up through the next two eyelets of the second set of sutures, repeating the process, creating that overhand knot after tightening the sutures down you'll notice that the sutures themselves are bringing the skin closer and collapsing the distance between our two red lines indicating our laceration. And we just repeat this process until we get to the top and finish with a non-slip knot. Anytime we have an open wound or an improvisational method such as external sutures to close a laceration or a wound to a casualty or to ourselves, we need to package that wound for transportation to prevent infection. We can use our Israeli bandage or another sterile dressing, wrap the wound, and prep it for movement. All right, guys, that does it for this video. That was 10 Fieldcraft camp hacks, if you were counting. But I hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscription, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.